We're the Space Twins, and welcome to My Outer Space TV. I'm number one. And I'm number two. Wait, I thought I was number one. Me too. Today we're here with director and cinematographer, Jonathan Lawrence. Hello ladies, number one, number two. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so let's begin with um, anything recent that you've been up to, what's going on? Yes, yes, actually. I just got back from a, a, a big uh, movie in China. Nice. Huge, huge movie called Empires of the Deep. Uh, it's it's uh, fantasy, sci-fi elements. Uh, it's actually China's uh, biggest special effects film ever. Um, they've got some people uh, from Avatar working on it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's huge, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. We, we shot for five months before uh, I left, and, and uh, then now they're still shooting some of the effects and some of the post stuff on it as well. What was it like doing a big major film in China? It, it's, a, it, it's a culture shock, really. I mean, it, I've, I've directed you know things around the world, actually. Uh, uh, India, Denmark, just the, the whole culture shock of, of dealing with really very very good production teams. Uh, I mean, they know their stuff. They have the top line equipment. We're using 235 cameras, um, but there's just always that communication barrier, you know, and, and there's just always the culture ba cultural barrier that every day you have to overcome. So, did you learn anything in Chinese? You mean like speak Chinese? Yeah, do you yes. get to learn? Anything? Yes, the, the only thing I remember is shabi. <laughs> what does that mean, if you can tell us? I'm effing done. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, the, uh, one of the camera guys taught me that. <laughs> nice. This film, is it the biggest project, one of the biggest projects you've done, or how would you compare it to some of your other work? It is, it is the biggest project that I personally have ever directed, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, they never actually told me the budget. Um, on the internet, if you go look it up, Empires of the Deep, it's uh, touted to have about a $100 million budget. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm guessing uh, it was somewhere between 50 and 100 million. Yeah. Awesome. Can you tell us, what do the sci-fi fanatics have to look forward to with this production? some of the most amazing effects that you've seen, and, and I know we've all seen Avatar now, and we all love mm -hmm. the effects in that, uh, and like I said, they actually have some people from the Avatar team working on this. Uh, it will be a 3D movie, and um, uh, uh, some just amazing, they've been working on these effects for five years already, in, you know, in, in, in just doing all the effects, and the production design is amazing and fantastic. The effects are gonna be out of this world, and it all takes place under the water. You know, the, the effects oh, wow. above, yeah, the effects above, like in ancient Greece, are going to be cool too, but, you know, it's going to yeah, kind of 300-ish style. We have these fantastic giant sets. We consumed every major soundstage in China to do this. Um, and, and then we had green screen, all or blue screen, sorry, blue screen all the way around uh, the perimeter for sky replacement and things like that. And that's going to be fine. It's going to look great. But once you get under the water... And, and just the, the, the vision that uh, the producer, uh, who was also the writer, had for the undersea stuff is we've never seen it. We've just never seen it before. And it's fantastic. And some of the most amazing, I think they have like a 35 minute undersea battle, oh, wow. you know, 90% CGI composited with the live actors and stuff. So are, is, what's the plan with this film? Is it going worldwide or, you know, China? How, how are we going to... It, it's, it's, already being hu it's already huge in China, and it's not even released. Um, they're hoping for uh, late 2010, perhaps early 2011. Um, and uh, it is, uh, they do intend to go worldwide. Uh, they've got some distribution uh, here in the U.S. already. Now that you've directed this big $100 million production, yeah. um, how did it all get started? Where did you, you know, get started? Um, actually, as a kid, uh, two things happened. Um, one, I, 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 I was a little kid and I fell off the toilet seat and I broke my collarbone, uh, but it didn't really hurt, so I thought, I can be a stuntman. And uh, <laughs> humble beginnings, yes. But, uh, and two, my mom had a little movie camera. Uh, she had this little uh, Bell & Howell movie camera, and I don't know why she had a little flatbed edit bay thingy, but uh, she did, and uh, she was a medical doctor. She had nothing to do with the movie industry. But I just started making movies, and I loved it. I just started making like little westerns and sci-fi movies uh, at the age of eight years old. And I go, wow, this is great. This is what I want to do. You know? And I didn't really deviate from that other than doing everything in production, you you know, uh, uh, from from being a stuntman uh, to doing craft service. My, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, my first uh, break was <laughs> when uh, um, I went to Cal State Long Beach with Tim Minear, uh, who worked on uh, uh, Angel and and Buffy, uh, uh, X Files. Um, we went to Cal State Long Beach together, and we grew up together. Um, and our teacher basically said. I can't really teach you guys too much that you don't already know because you've been making films since you were kids. So why don't I just give you an internship? 
So we got to internship on uh, an old uh, classic horror film called Reanimator. Uh, in my late 20s, I'm going to say, um, I, I said, I, I'm tired of trying to get my break. I'm going to make it happen. So I hooked up with an actor, a uh, writer friend, and we wrote this script called Dream Parlor. Um, and, uh, and we just said, okay, you know, we, we're, we're just going to make this. And we started making our plans, and we started, make, we started making this film. And it took us two years of weekends to create this uh, 100000 12 years ago, $100,000 sci-fi movie. And we were building sets from the ground up because my friend Salvi Malachi was getting me into the studios. She was working on all these shows like Godzilla and all this stuff. And every time they'd wrap, they'd go, come pick this stuff up. You can have it. Just come pick it up. Oh, wow. So we were going to like Alien Resurrection and we were going to Godzilla and they were, and they were just getting rid of all this stuff. And we go, this is great. So we start building all these sets. My friend gave us a warehouse to shoot in and we built these sets and, and I taught myself uh, 3D animation for that film. Um, and, and over about a two and a half uh, year period of weekends, we made this film, which is kind of cool because actually, now that I'm done with my thing in China, we're going to be rebooting that movie because we were so far ahead of the curve on anything anybody was doing mm -hmm. that, that technology has caught up to what we tried to do. And we've got all the raw footage, and so we're going to go back, we're going to up-res it to HD, and we're going we're to use today's technology to make a, a bigger, better, faster, tighter motion picture. Awesome. So you've certainly gotten your hands dirty, wasn't something overnight. What kind of advice would you give to the directors on the planet Croatia? Or to the producers on planet Triton? Move and go to China. <laughs> um, <laughs> A little bit I, well, for those who can't, don't yeah. have the opportunity. Right, the airfare is going to kill you on that. <laughs> Croatia and China, just, you know. Um, you know. You know what, just, just, if you want to do this, if you're already doing this, you are in such a prime place right now because technology is your friend. The future is now, cliche, yes, but true. Yeah. You have everything at your hands, everything at your fingertips. Pick up a camera, pick up an editing system. The cheap ones, the expensive ones, doesn't matter. Just start making stuff. Make good stuff, make bad stuff. Get criticized, take the criticism, learn from it, um, and, and just experiment and have fun and tell the story of the way that only you can tell it. I can't tell your story. Just tell it. And, uh, and eventually, hopefully, you're going to get your break because people are going to like your vision and what you have to say. So big thank you to director Jonathan Lawrence for being here today with us to tell us about your amazing project. Um, we definitely look forward to it, and I'm sure all those sci-fi fanatics out there look forward to it, too. Thanks. And thank you as well for your amazing encouragement and advice to our community. You're welcome. I'm number one. And I'm number two. For, for My Outer Space TV. TV.